Welcome back to Carpinionated, our weekly and slightly irreverent talk about cars, the car industry, and driving in general. I'm Doug Stewart, Senior Digital Content Producer for Fox 61 in Hartford. From Chicago, we have Jeff Buckles, writer and editor at WBBM, who once described piloting a Maybach as like driving a wave. And joining us from Fairfield County is Glenn Packman, improv comedian, and car enthusiast who will never buy another used car again. Um, our guest this week, uh, somebody I had to search far and wide for, uh, I'm kidding, was my is my brother Jeff from Virginia. And since we're talking about Accords, he's an expert because he's owned four of them. Um, so this is our first topic, the Honda Accord now and forever. Um, the Accord is in its eight, 48th model year was introduced really? in 1976. Wow. Um, and, you know, it just keeps getting better and better. It keeps getting larger and larger, but it keeps getting better and better, I would say. Um, I, let me go to Jeff first. Let's talk about um, a, about what, what Accords you drove and owned and why you kept coming back to them. Well, um, I guess the first one was, and maybe you, I was trying to remember what year it was. I think it might've been in 86. Do you remember the gray three-door, the hatchback? Yep. yep. It was a LXI. Yep. So it had the, um, the pop-up headlights. It had the, the, the kind of boxy pop-up headlights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they always worked. You know, they weren't those headlights that went one up and one down or anything like that. <laughs> so, you know, and, and that was uh, that was one of the first like, um, you know, up to date, not, uh, you know, I've had Chevelles and so forth in the past and back in that range. Um, that's what I had. And I, and I bought this as a driving car when one of my Chevelles actually got nice enough to where I didn't want to drive it everywhere. So yeah, I had that and I went all over creation with it and, you know, never had any issues with it. It was pretty quick and uh, pretty reliable. And uh, until somebody squished it, we were doing really well. And we bought a 94 Accord after our daughter was born. So that was 98. And I had had a, a 69 Camaro that I had driven for several years. And uh, that wasn't the best uh, car for an infant. I think it had maybe 70,000 miles or something like that on it. And again, so it was, this was a four-year-old something car at the time. And this young couple had it. And it couldn't, it, if it had been professionally detailed by uh, by a used car dealer or something like that. I mean, it couldn't have been cleaner. It was perfect. They're like, oh, yeah, um, we don't take it on trips or anything. You know how you like go on a trip and then there's food in the car and crumbs and you spill stuff and all that. We just rent rent a car. To go on <laughs> oh my <a> trip. God. <laughs> so, wow. I mean, this car was this car was in such nice shape. And uh, the, the, the woman, she might've been uh, 30 or something like that. She actually, we were pulling away and, and um, my wife was like, oh, look at that. And she had gone back to the porch of the house and she was crying, like, because oh, we were wow. in the car. <laughs> so, um, you had that for a long time. I, I drove it and drove it and drove it. And then, um it was it was Allison's first car uh so she drove it to high school and so forth and then uh and then she um managed to sort of notice a red light too late and crunched into a minivan and she crunched up the front end pretty the one corner of the front end pretty pretty badly and it was it was the middle of winter here and um, you know, so I got it back. And of course my natural instinct is to fix everything. And I'm out there in the cold and 
fixing away at it and just you know it I had cut a cut like a or pulled like no I kind of cut a fender off and I had to cut part of the behind the fender out like the headlight mount and stuff and, and then I went and got a fender and I'm like well the fender went on very easily uh but there was still a chunk of like actual car missing behind it so it wasn't ideal I got it going again and some um oh the air conditioner clutch was screeching and and it was way down below the starter and below some other stuff and I'm like this is it and I'm not we're not doing this so I mentioned it to this guy at work uh, who worked in the warehouse and he's like I'm like yeah I'm selling this car and yeah I'm just gonna get something different it's it's shot it's you know it, my daughter crunched it it's whatever uh you know, uh, I got it so he can drive, but it's needs, you know, more. And he's like, well, what do you want to sell it for? I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm just selling it like $300. $300. This guy had helped me out with some different things or whatever. I said $300. So I come in the next morning and there's, there's $300 bills on my desk. <laughs> and, uh, and I'd driven it in that day. So I, I turned it over to him then and did, and he he drove that car for like I think three or four more years after that. Wow. Jeez. He had over three hundred thousand miles on it. Wow. And uh, oh. um but after that we got uh a black or no a, a nice uh gray two thousand eight um EXL leather you know so leather interior all the all the features and everything and then a, and then um somewhere along in there oh uh Al allison and i went out we kind of shared the down payment and and stuff and got allison a uh 2009 a black accord mm -hmm. yeah um so that was when she was still she was still in, in school. high school and she's still uh -huh. driving she's 25 she's i guess been working for three years in dc hmm. yeah and she has she has gotten hit or hit not hard but look you know here like little fender benders on like every body pin on the car <laughs> sounds like a car in washington <laughs> yeah and, uh, and I, I brought it down I, you know i collected collected different body panels you know, one time last year over a period of a, a month or two and painted them all gloss black and got them and then she came down for a weekend and we we took off the the whole front fenders front bumper cover rear bumper cover uh a door and we bolted all these parts onto it oh, God. and sent you know, it back out <laughs> and now, now you see one of the fundamental differences between me <laughs> and my brother <laughs> <laughs> the car's broken i'll let somebody else fix it so that's not what jeff does jeff does that's and good yeah. for you yeah well yeah wow so, so jeff why, why why do you think why do you think the Honda Accord has lasted? You know, why do you think why do you think it remains popular all these years? Well, I mean, you know, I would say it it never it never deteriorated into the category of some of these, you know, like your GM sedans that just became irrelevant and the mm. and the you know the performance was terrible and the you know of these the some of these you know i just think of the gm like you know whatever it comes i don't even i can't even think of the model you probably can but you know these these different cars that were just awful cars and like my wife had this uh Chevy Citation, um, you know, and it was just yeah. awful. Like, I couldn't drive it for, you know, we would go and it was like hurting our relationship because 
<laughs> or drive if we went somewhere for like more than a half an hour i just got angry and uncomfortable <laughs> and, yeah. you know uh but they they were always good and the you know the the performance was good they had a wide range of models yeah there was plenty of room you never felt like you were cramped okay. like in a chevette or something you know and, and there were always civics for the people who wanted a little less i always absolutely shunned civics just because they weren't accords you know yeah. i'm like i'm not buying a civic oh you should consider a civic they've gotten really nice i'm like no i buy accords you know yeah. so mm -hmm. um i don't know it was just always a, a good performing and really super driving car and you know it was and i think that people just i don't know i i, I don't know what the statistics are but i think people probably just went and bought another one because they always treated them well you know yeah yeah right uh, uh, Jeff Buckles, what do you think the Accord lasts for so long? I think I think your your brother is onto something there in terms of uh, Hondas versus American cars. I think um, at the very moment that um, a lot of the American car industry was trying really hard to struggle out of what's kind of become known as the Malaise era was exactly the moment that Honda decided, you know, we're going to build a plant in Ohio and we're going to make really nice American cars. Mm -hmm. And they did. Uh with and you and you know, they looked good. Uh they uh you they were really comfortable that generations of uh accords had really low cowls, you'll remember. Yes. So, like they yes. Had the glass area. Mm -hmm. um you could you see the visibility was terrific uh they ran like watches like and they were they had great performance and tons of options and um and uh, they, they were just incredibly appealing at a time when you know uh with very few exceptions uh, american sedans were just not mm -hmm. um and and i think you know somebody buys an accord it's like oh geez this is a this is a really nice car and they get 140 150 200,000 miles out of it and it's like well okay let's let's buy another one mm -hmm. and and on and on and on my dad um like me grew up in a general motors household his father worked for a general motors division and he did also briefly of course we're from my whole family's from mid michigan and uh, he reached a point where he was, he had bought, I remember his last American car or the last American car that he bought for a long time. It was a, he bought a demo. It was a 1980 Buick LeSabre Limited with the custom interior. This would have right. been. Oh, so the big, with, the big pillow seats. Yes. Yeah. The dove yeah. with the specifically the dove gray crushed velour. Uh, it was a it was an executive's <laughs> wife's car, which means, of course, it was maintained to a fault, and it was still garbage. And he <laughs> ended up, and he ended up spending the next fifteen years buying Honda Accords and driving them into the ground. I think he got two hundred plus thousand miles out of an eighty one and an eighty four, and I think his wife at the time had a ninety an 89 or a 90 i think and um and that was for him that was it it was like there was no looking back yeah um and i think that's you know if you can convert an old gm guy to yeah. buying hondas then you know it's kind of game over yeah and glenn you recently drove the newest honda accord Yes. The irony there is that the only Accord that I have personally owned was one from the very first generation. It was in 1977. And wow. one of the things that really struck me was there's no relationship between the two cars. Yeah. The 77 <laughs> was was smaller than, I, than the Fit, which they're not even making anymore. Um, yeah. And the car has just grown over the years. Um, but yes, it did. Um, I, I, I'm going to I, I'm going to say that I scrutinize this car way more than I would uh, a typical rental car because it's an Accord. Um, you know, the, the bottom line is it, it, there. It's an exceptional car, powerful, 
road smoothly, easy to drive, very attractive. It had one thing though, if I could get a hold of Honda and say, hey guys, one thing that was very un-Honda-like and that was that the seats I felt weren't uh, in the butt department were not padded enough. Long periods of time in the car became uncomfortable. Mm. And I'm amazed that I'm saying that about a Honda because Honda's really, I mean, that's a car that's known for the long haul. I just felt that there wasn't enough padding on the actual seat. Now that could be easily resolved by just getting something squishy and putting it down there. Or maybe I'm just a sensitive flower. I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> I've I've driven enough cars so that I know when I'm sitting on a comfortable seat. And this was, they were a little off. Mm -hmm. So that would be my only real note. Everything else would be completely, you know, overtly subjective. Um, I think. I find the current version that a little bit of width that they added to it doesn't translate to more room on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I think it throws the dimensions of the car just a hair off, but that's me. That's just me. But I mean, it's still a class leader and that's been the story of this car since the first one rolled off the lines in, in 76, you know, uh, Honda has done a terrific job at making this car, the benchmark when you're talking about, the four-door sedan that people want to buy in this country, that's the name that comes up all the time. Yeah, the and they one, have yeah. aggressively, aggressively put cars forth that hold onto that mantle. I think they also have spent a lot of money paying off car and driver to be on their, their 10 best. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Sir, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. I can't, I can't prove it. It's conspiracy theory, but, you know. No. Um, uh, seriously, though, they, I think the Accord has been in their 10 best since they have started doing the 10 best. Yeah. Um, I, I that's right. One or that two is years. That is actually correct. I, yeah. I, I, I don't even think yeah. they've, they've missed a single year. And year after year, and there's car and driver going, yep, well, we hate to sound like a broken record, but it's a fantastic car, you know? It's it's the leader of that segment, and that is saying a lot. Um, I am... I. I <laughs> I think Doug knows that I have a little bit of attitude towards top Hondas because I got a little bit of an attitude from a Honda salesman once that really ticked me off. Um, but they make they make a tremendous car, and the Accord is the you know is the shining star of their uh, of their lineup. And since mm -hmm. then, they've spread that into other areas. I mean, the Civic is just is an amazing car in that class. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, they just they, they, they've, they've really. They rarely have a miss, you know, right. and and it's and the and the cars that are misses are not because they're not good cars, they're just the wrong car at the wrong time. The I you know looking at you cross tour, you know, but <laughs> but you. had had <laughs> had that come out, you know, closer to now rather than then, I think right. we probably would be in a different category. Jeff, you know, right. I think if you I think if you put. Uh, pilot or ridgeline wheels and tires on a cross tour throw a spare tire on the roof <laughs> maybe some fog lights up there i think it makes a really good case for itself honestly <laughs> i kind of want to do that actually yeah. flat black right. the hood you know i mean let's right. do it up and let's also i mean when you talk about the accord being a great car of course it's a great car but it's also become a great platform because particularly mm -hmm. starting with the sixth generation, which is probably one of my favorites, it was, you know, they got bigger, sort of more American sized. And that platform also begat the Odyssey and the Pilot and the first Ridgeline and the Acura TL and MDX. Like it sort of became the genesis for half of the uh, Honda product line in, you know, in this country. Um, and I don't, you know, and that says a lot about how versatile and, and solid the platform is. And I don't just say that because I own a car from that platform, um, which apart from the glass transmission, perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not good for the Midwest, no? Not typically, no, no, no okay. it, it isn't. But uh, it doesn't rust. No. So that's yeah. that's also that's also true. But no, I mean they just it's they're so incredibly well built and 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 there's not you know I think about the difference between like the Accord and the Camry, for instance, which is sort of mm -hmm. the other 
you know, this is which, which I don't think you can talk about the accord without talking about the Camry. So I'm glad you brought it up. Correct. Yeah, it is sort of the Ford versus Chevy of of the last 30 years, at least in that in that area. And you look at the two cars together, and the Accord is a car that is, I think, confident. It projects this era of look. I, I know what I am. I know I don't need to be anything else. You know, this is. You know, it's Honda being confident that it knows what to do. The Camry is Toyota throwing virtually everything it can at the wall. Yeah. Oh, we're going to give you this slash. How about a black roof? We can do that. How yeah. about, you know, yeah. let's do this. Let's let's do that. Let's throw, you know, let's throw this other stuff. It's just stylistically, it's just, it's. Yeah. For, it's for, I've, all... I've, I've said this for the past, you know, five or six years or maybe more. Like, and someday... I think the, the, there's the same people who, you know, similar people who have bought a Camry and then they bought another Camry and then they bought, but I feel like someday they're, they're going to walk, they're, yeah, and, and they're great cars, but they're going to walk into that show and go, you know, it just looks too weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm wondering, I, I just, do you think Toyota is overcompensating for the fact that the Camry has historically been kind of a boring drive? I mean, it's it's a well yes. put together car. It does everything well. It doesn't exude a lot of personality, and that's where I think Honda has definitely won up to the Camry all along. Is that mm -hmm. you sit in a cord and it's all Honda. You know, you get it. And it, like Jeff said, it's very straightforward. It's very confident. The Camry has always been the car for people who don't want to think about driving. And I'm just wondering if they overcompensated by just trying to gussy up the outside to make it look more exciting mm, yeah. and then you're then you're just creating you know a sheep in wolf's clothing it just you know, uh, it, uh i don't know i just the, the 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 last few generations of that car just seemed to be going down this weird like you said let's take everything and just chuck it at the car mentality yeah. and, and i've noticed that the styling on that car and i think they're they may be missing the boat with the you know with the market that that's looking for that car you know yeah i have some you know uh neighbors here that are you know they're in their late 60s or whatever and and they they got a corolla because they wanted a corolla but the they're just sort of befuddled by the appearance of it. They're like, well, yeah, they look kind of weird, but we, we were gonna. That's what we were buying, and and you know, I, I remember riding with him, and he looks down at the shifter, and it's you know kind of gated. It's like this Z-shaped notches and stuff like that. He's like, I don't know what this crap is all about. I just want to get it in drive, and you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, I think there are good looking Toyotas, but I think that this attempt and you're and you're right, Jeff, the new Corolla, the new generation of Corolla is just it's out there, man. But mm -hmm. as long I mean, I guess as long as it's gonna be the default choice for rideshare drivers in big cities around the country, I suppose we'll right. I suppose we'll right. always see them, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think maybe one thing that that saved Honda from themselves on that one is having the Civic because they did all the weird stuff to the Civic style. Mm -hmm. you know? right. yeah. yeah, it's definitely yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a car for a different kind of buyer than the Accord. Sure, right, sure. right. Yeah. Even as it, is, it has grown in size, yeah. I was um, I parked next to just as an idea of how to sort of cars in general have gotten bigger. I parked not too long ago, I parked next to the new Acura Integra, which is the Civic platform. Um, and I have, um, I have a TL from the, well, the second generation TL from the sixth generation Accord platform. And the Integra is six inches shorter than my TL. And mm -hmm. in every other dimension, it is identical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's grown. I I, yeah. I looked I looked up and uh, the seventy six Accord is eighteen. My math skills. The wheelbase was on uh, the seventy six was ninety three point seven inches, and the two thousand twenty four is one hundred and eleven point four inches. So, 
18 or so, right? The length, it's grows by, grown by almost exactly 20 inches. The height is 10 inches different. The width is 10 inches different. And the height is like uh, four inches different about. And the weight has gone from 2,000 to 3,300. So yeah. it, it has it has grown in size, but, you know, you could say the same thing about the Civic. You know, All cars or, have grown or, in size, oh, and oh. a lot of that is safety-related. A lot of it is, That's you know, right. equipment that they have to carry. And also, if you're going to put all this stuff in the car, you have to make it more powerful, and then that constitutes a larger size, and then that's kind of how that happens, right? But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and and even you know, even a larger Honda drives like a smaller car just because the steering is so good and the mm -hmm. right. uh, it's so well weighted, and the suspension is always uh, is always really well tuned, and and you certainly get a sense that you're driving a car and not you know, guiding an appliance of some kind. <laughs> I, th I think the, I think the only time, um, well, I, I mentioned the, the, the cross tour, but I think that that's, that's kind of a separate case, but I remember when they introduced, I think it was the 2012 Civic uh, in New York and it was the decontented one. Oh, it's yeah, like that, you, was, that was their miss. That right. Was their miss. <laughs> and, and they brought it out and there was like, really? that's what you want to do yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they rushed and then they rushed the, the, the redesign in like literally a year and a half later right exactly right. exactly because they realized right. and that's one thing about honda that's really smart is they see the reaction and they're like oh nope we got to fix this now they they have always been that's what i've always heard they are very much like you know they're they're asking people questions they're asking journalists questions i think like the the whole thing with the pop-up headlamps they were really concerned about that is that too much is that is that going over the edge and you know i heard that they were asking journalists that and mm -hmm. and just like we really want to know and you know they you know i think the fashion has moved on that they're not going to do that again but you know yeah they're... I thought it was cool that that generation, and specifically the two door coupe version. Oh, is like oh, one of that's my favorite, beautiful. My favorite oh, Hondas yes. of all time. Yeah. That is a great car. It is. I would love yeah. to find one. That well, that that generation in general is just really good. I mean, yeah. the coupe was terrific. The sedans were really nice. The Aero Deck, which <laughs> never came here. <laughs> That's a car, man. That thing is yeah. super cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth pointing out that um, in the, the the brand new iteration of the Civic, you know, the one we're seeing now, they designed out some of the over design in the last one because mm -hmm. I, I felt I felt the last one was a case of just again throwing too much spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. I mean, there were just there's so many points where on on the car they were like, hey, you know. We got this thing that looks like a fake black vent. Let's put it here so it looks like a fake black vent. Yeah. You know, and they're every it's just there's so much going on in the last generation. I think somebody came along and just said, guys, 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 sometimes less is more. Uh, because the latest model really looks like a baby civic or sorry, a baby accord. Uh it, it you know, they took so much from uh, from the Accord language, and I think it's all the better. I, I don't think they're going to lose yeah. any sales over that. But Coco What's Chanel the... was right. Always take I'm one thing gonna... off before you leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They, they need to hire Coco, right? She's it's dead true, now. though. Just, um, yeah. <laughs> well, she's cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, this has been great. I thank you guys. Um, I really appreciate you hanging out uh, with us for another week. Um, this has been Carpinionated. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like us to explore, you can contact me at dstewart at fox61.com. Um, we are, you know, I'd like, if you like the show, uh, feel free to give us a like and subscribe. Um, and we will see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Good night. Bye.